Patrick Talley was released on December 6th when we did the show. Um, it was, you know, my brainchild. Um, it was, I worked the hardest I ever worked on an album, coin album I've ever in my life. A lot of no glory work. Um, a lot of just sitting there with computers, um, making this music, doing stuff that hadn't been done. A lot of people love it, a lot of people hate it. A lot of people don't understand what it takes to make that kind of music. They think that, that it's just some gay techno thing, you know, some hardcore purist metal head is just like thinking it's that, but there's a lot of work that goes into that. These sounds are made out of thin air. You have basically an oscillator which emits a tone and you take that tone and you use filters and all kinds of shit and you have to have a vast knowledge of synthesis and production skills to make it sound like that. It was definitely the hardest album I've ever made in my life. Um, and it was very inspiring for me and Monk and Fieldy um, to do it because we're doing songs in different keys. Um, we had to fit guitars around what they're doing. Um, we had to change our style, playing style, um, everything. Um, the guys, you know, Fieldy had to turn down his subs and his bass because we already had subs in there from the sub bass. Um, we had to meld and figure out how to make those two work together. We had to figure out how to make the guitars work with the other things going on. And then um, with using samples, Ray basically played drums without a kick or a snare. Um, we took those away from him because, you know, the sampled kicks and snares are way more punchy and, and huger than anything that we could reproduce on a regular acoustic drum kit. Um, a lot of work and just in, in, in inventing and in, in innovating um, things that hadn't been done before. It was a huge learning process for all of us. I, I started listening to, to dubstep, I think, oh, it was like around 2010. Um, uh, I think the first dubstep played to was, some, was Excision. Um, and then I went back and listened to like more of the innovators. I mean, dubstep started around 2007, 2006. Guys like Ruth Ghost Scream and, and the originators, and it was more, they call it dubstep because it was more reggae influence, it was dub. Um, and it's just, uh, I think Excision took it to the next level where he made it more metal influenced. It was heavier. So hearing that, and then hearing Sonny's stuff when it came out, Skrillex, um, all those things I got in my head, I was like, I really want to experiment because it was like the heaviest show I heard in my life. It was, and I've always been a fan of any kind of bass music going back from my old Miami bass days. And uh, Korn was kind of like a bass band. We were bass heavy, we were detuned, and it was huge. We were dropping 808s and filled these bass tone. And it, this all kind of seen the work. And I, I went in and asked the guys, hey, would you guys be willing to experiment with this, this kind of music? Um, I played them a couple songs, uh, dubstep songs, and uh, they were all blown away. And they said, let's try this. And that's when I called Skrillex and asked if we wanted to, to uh, do some songs with us. And, He's a huge corn fan and he's all, of course. I mean, we did three songs with him in two days. Um, we did Get Up, Narcissus Cannibal, and Cast Lives and Everything. And it was pretty organic. I mean, they went by really fast. I mean, we did probably Narcissus the Cannibal. That took a little longer. Sonny hadn't, he did the, the verse and the choruses, but we didn't have a middle part. So um, when we played with Sonny at Coachella, he hooked me up with Jake Kill the Noise. Had Kill the Noise come down and he wrote the bridge. Um, and uh, I mean, it was, it was pretty easy working with Sonny because he was from uh, the band from first to last. He has a background in rock music, so he knew about how, you know, rock songs are arranged and it was relatively easy um, working with him. It was until we, we worked with the other producers. Um, dubstep and just and dance music in general, their uh, arrangements were way different. So it was, it was all left up to me. We, we came up with parts and uh, I arranged them or into a rock kind of thing. To me, it's about putting out music I love and not, and not conforming to what anyone wants me to do anymore. And that's the way we think in our band. And it's fortunate, it's, it's, it's a blessing and a privilege to be able to, to think that way and, and do what you really love. And that's where we're at at this point. The future of Corn right now is uh, we're getting ready to go start our tour. I'll probably be out again for another year, two years, uh, just solid touring, that's what we do. We love playing and taking our music to, to our fans. And then, then after that, you know, we'll be, uh, we'll do another record. It's just what we've been doing. Me and Fieldy and the original drummer, David, which we, we started out in basically Fieldy's, his bedroom. 
<laughs> in Bakersfield. And, you know, it was like after school and stuff, and it was me, him and I writing songs. And then it wasn't for about three years, th three or four years later, once we graduated high school, we moved to Burbank and started another little band. We got signed, and we kind of thought, it was, it was kind of like, when you think back on it, it was like, we were so naive and, and thought, like, oh, the whole world is at our feet. But we didn't realize, like, you know, that's just the, the very, very tip of things. Now that we look back, we started to kind of get into Rick Rubin and how he, his take on, on, um, on you know, his, the way he produces bands. And basically we took, you know, Cypress Hill, Rage Against the Machine, Sepultura, Faith No More, all these bands we sort of created our own band based on all of that stuff and it's no different than what you know people are doing people do you know that yeah. uh, want to create their own sort of take on things and that's what it was we would when we recorded our first couple of albums with ross robinson and we were just really just cr trying to do something that hadn't been done but we didn't know it was going to have such an impact sure. all of our records we've taken some element of production and songwriting whether it was something we learned or, or something we found, figured out, well, that didn't work, so let's, let's fucking lose that. And then it was about taking uh, those best elements and sort of putting them all together. And I think, you know, even with the, the Path of Totality album, we're still, I'm, I'm still using those ideas and those production ideas to create this record in the way that we write, in the sonically, how, we are, how we're able to achieve, I mean, the willingness to collaborate with other songwriters, I think, is huge because it, it reduces the ego to come up with something that's greater, so, something that's bet the best thing for the band, which is the uh, the album. That's the achievement: is to make the best album possible for everybody. And um, I think it's important to do with songwriters now to get some sort of your foot in the door. And really, like, it's not easy for musicians, you know. And for anybody, these producers that are doing dubstep and how, you know, to see them creating the stuff basically just on their laptops and becoming huge because of the people's want to hear more, uh, it's incredible. Jonathan, about a, year and a half, about a year and a half ago, basically came up to me, started playing some Skrillex songs on a boombox. And the, I think the most enticing thing to me about it was the low bass thing because if you look back on our catalog of albums you can hear some sort of natural progression that there is us including an 808 us detuning guitars us including trying to capture that aggressive low end attack and it's always been sort of a struggle but when i when jonathan played me some tracks off of the, the scary monsters album that's when i was like wow and then he you know and then he said what do you think about trying to include some of these some of this style into our new album and I said man I'm totally down and it had sort of like my whole thing was it, it was kind of like I could take a sort of a nine inch nails thing to it and put that in and have that balance with our existing sound which is the bass drums and guitar Jonathan's vocals and kind of balance that I think that was the trick is balancing what we, how we've established in our sound and including something new that was gonna just fucking knock people's heads off. People thought it was gonna be a dubstep album, and it's not. This is a corn album, and I want I want people to understand that. Um, it was us collaborating with other songwriters, and just to kind of get inspired and and to be creative and to push the envelope. And and I I don't I I felt like we were people were getting let down, but. The whole process, I knew in my heart, like, people are going to fucking love this. People are going to know that this isn't some dance album. It's still a metal album. It's just our version of what's happening and with our creative path. Yeah, the early years of Korn, believe it or not, it was like 1993. And then a year later, it was 94, we, we released the first Korn album. And we were always trying to do like, you know, something heavy and different and I don't know, it just kind of came together once we all hooked up. It's been about man, almost 18 years now, later. For me, you know what I noticed is over the years, 
like when we started out, I remember we're like we wanted to have this heavy music, but we're trying to hit this low bass thing. So we found like an 808, just like boom, and you know, started doing things like that. And I was trying to slide the bass with it. And then we started getting to like where I could like wobble the bass and do weird things. And it really trips me out because it's, I guess it's where we're at today with the record we put out of the heaviest bass record ever with the bass wobbling and, and trying to do what we've always trying to get out of our system. And it just kind of came together and clicked. I think with this new corn record is what we've always been trying to do. This one right here. Maybe because we were trying to do something that was hip from the beginning, that our fans always kind of knew that we we're like a band trying to do new things all the time, that they were all right with us reinventing and changing and trying new things. Jonathan was, you know, looking online, he's always been into DJing, and he stumbled across some dubstep DJs and found this cat named Skrillex and said, let's do it, let's try a song with him. We tried it. And it was like kind of scary because it was really dope. And we're like, well, let's mess around with it. And we just, you know, started dabbling. We were gonna do an EP. It just started turning out so sick that we just did a full length album. I think to date, we've never got a better response from our entire 10 albums that we put out. The number one like downloaded Corn song has fallen away from me. Um, it was in the 90s, I think, off of, dude, I don't even remember what album. We have 10 albums, I can't even remember. And the second number one downloaded one was Get Up, brand new one that we just did on this uh, Path of Totality record. So it's like, that's how much people are digging it, that the number two downloaded song is this new stuff. And I'm not sure on Narcissistic Cannibal, that might even be a bigger hit now, I don't know. But people are, are we're definitely getting a good response. Like they'll be doing their thing tonight, the dubstep DJs, and when you hear it, I don't even know if it's music. It's so weird. It's such a new thing that I can't explain it. Some people just gotta hear it. But it mashes up real well with, with corn. I had to be here to be able to launch our record because all our friends are here, our family's here, you know, and they and we can all experience that with them together. It'd suck if we were launching our record in some other city. I'm not going to name another city like I'm hating on it, but, you know, it's just nice that it happens to be here because most of the time it's always in New York. Um, you know, I've been playing professionally for 20 plus years now out in L.A. and I've done a lot of national acts from David Lee Roth, you know, then a little band called Van Halen to Army of Anyone with uh, Robert and Dean DeLeo from Stunt Double Pilots and, and I'm probably a hundred other bands in L.A., you know, some successful, some not so successful, but uh, my last band, Army of Anyone, uh, had the same management as Korn. So um, Prospect Park um, called me up one day as the demise of Army of Anyone and said, Korn's looking for a permanent drummer. And I was like, well, I'm really interested. And um, um, make a long story short, I went to uh, Soundcheck in Seattle. They had Joey from Slipknot filling in in the 07 tour. And I just went up um, and filled in. Um, or I'm sorry, he was filling in his last show. I went up at Soundcheck in an empty arena and played six songs, and he said, welcome to Corn. we'll see you in Dublin. You know, Jonathan has was, was always been a fan of electronica music as well as all of us, you know. I've always been into program stuff from, the, from Nine Inch Nails to Radiohead to, to Manson, the stuff that, that's, that honors acoustic playing, but you know, the electronica music's never gone away. It's been around for decades. It just comes and goes in different formats, you know. And so with this new dubstep, John's the one that turned us on to that oh, well over a year ago and, and uh, introduced us to all these artists from all over the planet. And just to see what they're doing with noises and crushing them and mangling them and spitting them out this way and distorting this, and it's really amazing. You know, you can't get that on any other instrument, a guitar or whatever. And uh, so it's, it's a little rough. It was rough for me at first to accept as a drummer because I, I love playing from the heart and playing by feel, and I'm not a big fan of click tracks. And, but it's the music so powerful and the drums are so massive on there that I, I just honored what I heard and played to them instead of like usually the drums are the first thing laid down I was one of the last instruments to be recorded on the new record so it was kind of crazy to go that way it was very different for me and very challenging to play really simplistic and just give the song really what it needs it's not about like check out this cool drum fill or whatever you know I do embellish a little bit live you know I'm playing everything hundred percent uh, live, which I love. We're triggering everything. So on the record you hear, which is a lot of programming, a lot of things are locked up. Um, 
but uh, live I'm playing to a click track and I have the exact sounds sampled from the records and or from the new record and uh, on my kick and snare drum so it's really exciting to play it live. With Korn's always pushing the limit of their own experimentation uh, with Untitled album we really stretched out pretty far they reeled it back in kind of for the Korn 3 album which was back to old school everything on tape live instruments in a room uh, and then for this new album, I'm really pushing the boundary with inviting dubstep producers in to work on songs, collaborating with the band, Korn. Um, I would say this album pushes it the furthest because the keyboard elements are way up in the mix. With the dubstep blend, you know, you've got the heavy growling bass of dubstep with the low tuned guitars of Korn. You blend that together. Um, they've brought the keyboards up in the mix. Everything is way more present. Uh, it's definitely tearing your face off. And we've had to spend a lot of time going through the stems and doing this uh, surgery, production surgery, I guess, uh, taking apart elements, creating drum kits for Ray, uh, creating keyboard beds for myself. Um, this is a different thing, you know. Uh, it's different than the old corn songs, you know. We really are bringing kind of a wider, bigger sound with the new album. Um, I would say for us live, it's kind of scary because we play all these dubstep songs, which are really heavy, lots of elements flying around the room. We go back to the old corn library, trying to, okay, what do we do to make those sounds as big as the old, I'm sorry, as big as the new album. Uh, but uh, we're definitely pushing that. Um, you know, a lot of what I do for the show is segues, kind of play some pads, do things that fatten up the old material. So, you know, we're still going with that. So far, it's been really cool, the marriage between the two. I mostly got to know a couple guys just briefly on this last tour we did. Um, it was uh, a tour with Downlink and Datsik. And that was really cool talking to Downlink about how he even makes his sounds, what he does before he's writing a song. He'll work for about a week just with a concept in mind, uh, programming and working with SoftSense, just kind of creating a library of sounds that he might use in a potential song. But he doesn't get started in the song until all these sounds are made. So he's got a whole library of different elements to pull from when he wants to do a tune. Uh, so getting to know them, working with them um, is kind of new for me. I mean, uh, that was mostly something that John brought them in. Uh, for me, it's like been getting to learn what dubstep is about, been uh, learning and listening to a lot of things like Excision and Datsik and checking these guys out, um, seeing what they're doing. I mean, it's really cool. As a synthesist myself, it's even a lot of elements that I'm already used to, but it's just used in a different way. The bass is king, not the vocal so much in the dubstep world. With what we're doing with Korn, it's like we're trying to write songs, uh, which is even different from what the dance music of dubstep is. Like, choruses and verses may not exist in the way they exist in rock and roll music, like with songwriting, but uh, Korn has taken those elements and twisted it in a way so we have these you know, hooks and catchy songs. We've got verses and choruses. Um, it's not so much about the dance music scene with a little bit of vocal melody and then a drop, but we've taken those elements and integrated into the low end of what Korn is, just this detuned, nasty, dirty band. When they give me, they give me the name and I said the path of study, for me it was like pretty straightforward. I picture in my mind the image of that, like a uh, kind of building logo and with that empty landscape behind and all the lighting. It was like, it was difficult to do, but it was so easy to picture in my mind. So everything worked out like perfectly for me. I think the integration between both worlds, it comes so naturally, so natural for me. I think uh, for me, dubstep and the new like electro wave and all the stuff, it's like, like the new kind of metal for me or the new metal. Uh, when I see people like dancing and, and banging on, on the concerts of Sony or, or I don't know, 12 Front or wherever, I see the people is just banging like in a metal concert. For, for me, everything comes together so easy that it's the perfect mix and works really good.